Hello, welcome to Esperlux YouTube channel here straight from Geneva. My name is Marco. I'm the founder of Swiss Watch and taking over the YouTube channel for Chris Esperlux. So today we are with Maximilian Busser. We're going to talk about MBNF, the new creations, and his opinion about the watcher. And we got a few questions for you, Max. So thank you for having us here in this beautiful hotel room around with all your clocks around us and the watches. So thanks for having us. Great being with you guys. Um, so yeah, it's been uh, it's been again an insane year, and yeah. we're just September now. Yeah, yeah. And it's by far not finished. Yes. Yeah. The 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 third the, the fourth quarter is uh, is here, um, and I'm sure you guys have your hands full with work and new launches, and maybe as well the the only watch stuff is coming right, which is exciting which I can't wait to see the cutest thing I saw so far from you guys <laughs> okay, and, yeah, and the agreed. drawings were beautiful. So yeah, the lead did a great job. Yeah. So we have a few questions here prepared from Chris himself. And the first one is basically what's new from MBNF this year in the Geneva watch days, the perpetual Evo, the Orp D101. So please with uh, let's start maybe with the watches take a look at the 101 collection. So uh, we've had a pretty crazy year. We started mm -hmm. with the HM9 and Sapphire. Yeah. Then wow. we went on to the LMX, the 10th anniversary legacy machine, which, which is we this have piece. Here, yeah. uh, where um, would you like to yes, show it? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, 10 years of legacy machine started with the LM1. So, it seemed appropriate that for the anniversary, we actually re deconstruct our LM1 and reconstruct it even more 3D, which is our signature. Yes. So, you've got that flying balance wheel, of course. The two time zones, instead of being flat, now zoop, are at 50 yeah, degrees. Yeah. And we had that signature vertical power reserve indicator on LM1. Now it's a 3D uh, um, vertical power reserve indicator, but it also is gyrating, meaning the owner mm. of the watch can, at the end of the winding, continue winding, and the whole system turns on itself. Wow. Three barrels, seven-day power reserve. The original was one barrel, 45. It was basically um, LM1 on steroids. Yes. 33 pieces in titanium, uh, 18 pieces in red gold. Um, we It's going to take us two years to deliver them, mm. between half this year, half next year. And as you probably know, the world went a little bit bananas with a few of us independents, and we didn't see it coming, I must admit. And the demand went crazy. Yeah. So um, to my knowledge, I think there is one left for sale. <laughs> I'm not going to say sold out, because there is one for sale somewhere in the world. <laughs> Uh, it's just like a, an Easter egg hunt. Huh? Uh, you got to find it. It's exactly, it's exactly <laughs> that. Well, you can actually text us and we'll, yes. we'll tell you where it is. <laughs> and um, and so uh, so that was um, March. Then afterwards, uh, we unveiled... Um, no, that was February, actually. Then actually, we unveiled the new LM101. So LM101 was created in 2014. It's the... Um, it's the, the um, how do I say, the purest form of legacy machine, yeah. meaning this enormous flying balance wheel and our minute power reserve, nothing yeah. else. We managed to do the slimmest movement, smallest movement with that system, and it's the 40 millimeter case. What did we do on this particular piece? we introduced the double hairspring from our friends from H. Moser that mm -hmm. we'd actually introduced in the collab. Yep. And it's pretty cool because th the double hairspring is so beautiful to look at, but you never see it in a normal watch. Here it's on show yes. and it's enormous. Then um, a few tweaks to the, um, to the aesthetics. The bezel is uh, half the size. Uh, we we um, plated black the back of the movement to give more contrast. We reworked the dials a slightly larger, different uh, fonts on the paris. Really little touches, which make it the next generation piece. Um, and also, what we did was introduce it in steel for the first mm -hmm. time. So, the, which is the watch I'm, I'm showing right exactly, now, right? The steel piece with the the medium blue dial. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Not limited. What's what's the price point for people so, to understand? Let's say we're at how about I think fifty five thousand dollars. I may be wrong. Okay. I'm not really good at yeah. the prices on yeah. my own pieces. But <laughs> check out the website, right? If you guys exactly. want, or ask uh, asplugs.com as well. So um, so what's happened also there um, has a little bit taken us a bit by surprise. Mm -hmm. Is that now all our retail partners are on a two year waiting list? Wow. De facto, they've all taken deposits and. Um, 
We just took a deposit at the Mad Gallery in Geneva last week for a piece for October 2023. Wow. And I actually told my team, please do not take any money yeah. for what we're going to deliver in two years. Yes. And they told us, but the gentleman really wanted to give yeah. us the money. He wants to be sure that he gets it then. Yes, yeah. He thinks that if Fair he doesn't enough. give it, he won't. he's going to it. That makes sense, yeah. As, so, as a collector, I can relate. Huh? But either if I give the money, I, in my mind, it's like, okay, I, they committed, I committed, right? That's exactly it. But that, if it's just a name on the list, it's like, ah, you're not sure. You never know whether... Do I got to follow up or no or... So yeah, that's I, I understand his perspective. Then in the middle of all that, um, we uh, sent a few emails to the friends and the tribe and said, we've yeah. just created a really cool concept called Mad One. Yes. Would yes. you like to have one? And Which then the world the went, world, huh? yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, oh yeah. my God, what have we done here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the point was to say thank you to everybody who supported us over mm -hmm. the last, I mean, uh, and, and there was a lot of, uh, how do you say, um, of uh, people who are, I understand, upset yeah, because yeah. they're like, we love what you do, guys. We can't yeah. afford it. And finally, you create something that we can afford yes. and you're actually selling it to everybody it's except gone. us. <laughs> yeah. And um, no, it was the whole point is without MBNF, there is no Mad One edition. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was really important that we first say thank you. Yes. And then we'll work on next year on a, mm -hmm. on a variation, which will be uh, open to uh, the public. So yep. that's also another project in the pipeline. Which I can't wait to get my hands on. I was bugging you guys about it as well. So I, I know, you were one of the first ones to send me <laughs> messages and uh, Instagram messages, Email. LinkedIn messages, <laughs> Facebook messages. But yeah, uh, the, okay, okay, a little bit of patience. I got my money with me now. So <laughs> if there's one laying around. <laughs> and, um, and so now, um, now is Orb. Yeah. So that's what we just this unveiled at Geneva Watch Days. Beautiful creation. Yeah. So you know that we've been co-creating with our friends from Lippe um, yes. for now, uh, what's it, eight years? Mm. Uh, this is the 14th clock we've created with wow. them. Uh, I, you know why I love clocks? Yeah. Why I love creating clocks? Why? Is that as a watch creator, I have got two major issues. Mm. The first is wearability. Yes. Now, I've got a very Size small up. wrist, yeah. so how do you make something comfortable on yeah. your wrist? The second is water resistance. Not mm. on a legacy machine, but when we do our crazy horological yes. machines, how do you make that piece, how do you case it, how do you make it water resistant? Those are two problems I do not have yeah. in clocks. Size and water resistance. Yeah. True, we true. can go all out and, and create really shapes, cool pieces. The materials, yeah. Yeah. So um, Orb is a transformer clock. We've had a few transforming... Uh, uh, pieces. It's also a clock. I, for me, it's really important that we can interact with our pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see that most, yeah, yeah. as whenever I can on our watches and of course on our clocks, I want to be able to interact with our kinetic sculptures. Now, um, if you look at it as it is there, mm -hmm. it looks like a, a flower with this um, yeah. center of the flower coming up. Mm -hmm. it's, I will show you afterwards how it actually transforms itself. But as far as the movement goes, there's a big premiere for us. It's the base is the eight day power reserve movement mm -hmm. from Lippe, but it's a chiming clock. Yes, I heard and that. I yeah, before. love chiming clocks. Yeah, yeah. So it's we started off with a sonnerie au passage, mm -hmm. and that evolved into a heure au passage. Yeah, a sonnerie au passage is a, a clock which gives you a ding at every hour. Yeah, and we went one step. Well, they went one step forward to do an heure au passage, like a, um, a church clock, basically, yeah. which will, if it's seven o'clock, it'll go seven times, ding, ding, mm -hmm. ding, if it's three, etc. cetera. It, you can, of course, disconnect it. Yeah. And you can uh, ask it on demand. Mm -hmm. So cool. I'll, Paris, do you want to help sure, me out yeah. on this one? Maybe come closer, just see how you can make that work. So the on demand, uh, there's a little uh, trigger over here. You just press that, release it. There you go. Doesn't wow. that make you smile? Yes. It always makes me smile. Every time I've, I've been hearing it all week, I, and I see that little hammer go ding, ding. Their childhood memories, all sorts of things coming and back. And you're like, oh, that's my creation. <laughs> that it's I in the background. It's, that's exactly it. And, um, and so from there onwards, how does this transform? Mm. The design of this piece is due to Maximilian Martens, who's a young um, Berlin-based designer mm -hmm. who actually did the ECAL, the Lausanne School of Design, yeah. and did his internship afterwards with us. Mm -hmm. He's one of the super talented youngsters who did, uh, he did like eight months with us. And then he set up a studio 
And um, I actually, it's the first time I've been doing that. I told him, you know what? If you have any ideas, because I, up till yeah. now, all the ideas were mine. Yeah. So I'm starting to relinquish. You know, yeah, I'm getting yeah, old. Yeah. I have to think of my, <laughs> my next generation. So I'm starting to relinquish. And, um, and so he's the one who created the tripod clock mm -hmm. we launched last yeah, year. Yeah. And he, it's his idea who, uh, to, for this, um, this orb. I'll let Harris show how it works. Please, yeah. It's absolutely stunning. Somebody commented that it looked like a ladybug as well. It does, so, yeah. especially in the, the first position. And I said like a weapon for aliens. <laughs> so typically you can have that position. Mm -hmm. um, the, what you see as petals are actually blocks, ingots of aluminium which are machined. Yeah. Some people think it's plastic. I get really upset. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so it's incredibly complex to do. And then they're lacquered with um, uh, the same sort of lacquer used on cars. There's mm -hmm. seven uh, wow. layers of, uh, of varnish. And so it's, it's cooked in an oven. And look what happens. This flower ladybug becomes the orb, hence wow. its name. It's completely minimalistic. It sort of reminds me of uh, the first iPhones, you remember, white yeah, and yeah, black. And yeah. it yeah. actually exists in white and or black. iPods as well. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. The first iPod, it's got this slick completely seamless design to yeah. it and if you open it up again zoop, it transforms yeah. so you know i've always thought good design is about tension hmm. here you've got tension between something super minimalistic yeah. and something pretty exuberant mm -hmm. and that's what makes me happy and, and if you see in my style it's very much that yeah. and uh, max martin's had a great idea great design and uh uh, if he's listening to me, great job, Max. <laughs> and I didn't choose him because he's got the same first name as me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to say that. What's his last name? Martins. Martins. So it's not B, uh, so M. No, yeah, it's, okay. it's MM. <laughs> In this case, it's MB and MM and a lot of other people. <laughs> so another question we have is here, what can we expect from MB and F in the coming months? Ah, yeah, the year is as not As much finished. as you can tease, of course. So... Um, <laughs> The, the, um, the next months are going to be about our perpetual calendar. Okay. There are none left anywhere. Yes. So we had the classic perpetual calendar, uh, which has been in a certain amount of uh, materials. The classic, MBNF way. Yeah, the <laughs> exactly. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. So, right. <laughs> so the, um, the, um, the, the original perpetual calendar, L LM, created by the great Stephen McDonald. Mm -hmm. So we've done yellow gold, red gold, white gold, platinum, titanium. And there will be a new iteration. Mm -hmm. It won't be long. It's going to be in less than two weeks that okay. we'll be uh, unveiling it. It's a material which is a nightmare to machine. <laughs> Our uh, technical director looked at me and said, do not do that again. <laughs> you, think, you know, yeah. with that Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. like, do yeah. not do it. <laughs> and um, so we're probably not going to do it. So we're actually going <laughs> to limit that. And, um, and also, um, there's been the Evo. Mm -hmm. And uh, those so the three times 15 just went yeah. like that. And we're preparing on something also in that range, but that will be in October. So I've already said much too much. And I see that Harris is staring at me <laughs> going, oh, my, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're not supposed to say that. Um, and uh, there'll be a few more other amazing pieces <laughs> afterwards. Um, but in the meantime, I just wanted to also emphasize on uh, Only Watch, as you said. Yes, yeah. Uh, Only Watch is something which is incredibly uh, personal for me. Yeah. Uh, not only because we're talking, of course, of children who suffer and pass away, mm -hmm. but because uh, the Petavino family, uh, Luke Petavino, the creator, is a, is a great personal friend, and I've, I've followed him and his family and what they went through over the last uh, 15 years. Um, so for us, when I create a, uh, an only watch, it's always linked to childhood, mm -hmm. and either um, dr child happiness and dreaming or child suffering. Yeah. In this case, I really decided after a few suffering versions to uh, uh, dreaming and happiness, and it's uh, it's our panda. You've seen the yeah, drawings, it's so cute. And <laughs> so we'll unveil it, uh, the, the final product, finally, because we only had the drawings. Yeah. Um, in a, in a couple of weeks, I think also. Okay. Nice. And um, and that is, um, I have to say. It's been much more complicated to create than what it looks like. Yeah. The original bulldog is, of course, already a very complicated piece. Yes. But when we decided, and actually, it's not my idea. It's uh, Arno, our, mm -hmm. our one of our, well, actually, our digital and PR manager, who had the idea during a Zoom uh, last year. Uh, he said, uh, and he actually did a sketch. He said, why don't we do that? Dude, that's it. Yeah. We're going to do that. Perfect. And, uh, and so just like, let's do a black and white bulldog. That seems pretty easy. Yeah. Not easy. 
Why? Because you can't do it in ceramic. There's no way you can do it in ceramic for yeah, one piece. Or with, your, with the shapes you guys have. There's no way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it has to be lacquer. And everybody we want to see and who does lacquer said, yeah, yeah, no problem. But it has to be on steel. So our Bulldogs are in tight teams. So, oh, no problem. So we made three steel cases. Mm -hmm. Used the technique of the first lacquer uh, supplier. Just didn't work. Yeah. So the first case dead. Second one didn't work. So now we're starting to sweat like, oh my yeah. gosh. Third one, much more complicated where you put the lacquer and then you have to remachine the whole piece to actually make the lacquer perfect. Yeah. So you actually machine the lacquer. Um, worked. And then, um, and then there was an accident in the workshop. So the you piece which the is going, uh, going around, I got the call at 7 p.m. I will remember Aww. that call. Uh, so the piece which will be going around the, uh, the world with uh, only watch has got a miniature crack in it. Mm -hmm. So we are in the meantime producing another three cases. Wow. To finally, so that just before it goes on auction, yeah. we will replace it. Of course, then you've also got the little ears and course, the tail yeah, and yeah. all that. Uh, but um, of course, it's, it's a complex piece. Huh? <laughs> Congrats! Huh? But, but this is our life. Honestly, this is our, yeah. this is how we function. This is how we roll. This is MBNF. But your watches, your creations, they were ne never something that people say, "Oh, this was easy to make." No, it's always you try to innovate and go a step further and make your lives difficult. Yeah, you that's, probably that's part hear of the deal. this from your team all the time. Like you have a crazy idea, and they're like, "Okay, here we go. Let's uh, of sleepless nights finding suppliers." Yeah, finding but I think um, our also... team, which has been with us now for, I mean, mm. many of them have been in practically more than ten years. Yeah, I think they all suffer from Stockholm syndrome. Okay, <laughs> and uh, I think they've they've fallen in love with their the guy who makes them suffer. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and sense. so it's that's that's how I actually select them. Those who can't deal with the suffering is it's not possible. You see how so, mental they are. Exactly. Like, yeah, this is this is my guy. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> We're gonna at some point have to come and save all these poor people, but we'll talk about that later. Awesome. Can we show the perpetual evil you have on the sure, wrist? Sure, sure. Because this was one of my favorite watches because it's sporty. Plus, it's a it's a great watch for people who love watchmaking, right? The perpetual calendar for many yeah. is the pinnacle of let's say complications. So definitely, I'm sure it wasn't easy to make. And this is the, the sportier version, right? Yes. So sportier, not yeah, a sports yeah. watch. I mean, yeah. when you've got a flying balance wheel of 40 yeah. millimeters and brass. Don't do sports, guys. Uh, <laughs> but I, I actually I actually even played, I, I, I've played horrible golf, but I actually played golf with it. Okay. I've been swimming with it. I've went hiking with it. I play with my kids, which is probably the most terrible yes. thing yeah, to do yeah, with yeah. my little kids. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And so, so what's happened is that the movement is actually, which is a very classic movement with, as I said, this flying balance wheel. It's an eighteen thousand oscillation. It's not done yeah. at all to be sports mm -hmm. oriented. We actually um, make it, uh, how do you say, suspended? It's mm -hmm. suspended on what we call yeah. the flex ring. It's a, it's an invention of our technicians, where um, it's actually suspended laterally mm -hmm. and vertically if it gets a shock. The watch itself is built completely water resistant, screwed down crown, double, um, uh, you see, double gasket pushers, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. Integrated uh, rubber strap. Yeah, I must admit, I got a little bit scared because I I started wearing it, and when you start wearing it, you don't wear anything else. Yeah. And suddenly you realize, maybe I am I like just killing my own company because <laughs> once you've bought that, you, there's no reason to buy anything else. Yeah, but you... then after a certain amount of months, you realize that wearing all the time the same watch is insanely tedious. Yeah. Uh, and that even though it is practical and you can jump into the shower or in the sea or in the water and whatever or go hiking, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm a watch lover. I, I yeah, need to you change, change it up. I need to change I definitely. Watch, yeah. And uh, although the dial is uh, incredible, also the movement got a lot of attention, right? From the case spec. The, the movement is absolutely incredible. I mean, I, I don't want to take the whole next 20 minutes talking about the uh, yeah. Stephen McDonald movement but um, he um, he's the only genius I've ever met I've met a ton mm -hmm. of talented people in my industry and outside but he is a proper genius mm -hmm. he's a man who's reinvented something from scratch he's looked at what existed and didn't understand why it was made so he just invented his own way <laughs> uh, 581 components for a hand winding perpetual calendar which should have probably 220 at the maximum so more components you do the more issues can come and in six seven years seven, is it six years now 
um, we haven't had one come back because of any perpetual calendar issue. Wow. That's We've had great. a few other issues, which is normal mechanical watchmaking, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, but his, um, the guys. Incredible. That's amazing, huh? Because, yeah, the more components you add onto the watch, the sooner something might happen. Yeah. So with, you are basically in the upper echelon of these, uh, of number of components, right? Um, but beautiful, huh? So, yeah, definitely. Congratulations. I mean, I love your stuff since. Thank you very much. Since forever. Um, good. So let's go. No, no, you were a kid when I started. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, this I is mean, not the, since forever. The, the first watches that I saw was the HM3 when I started like going into watchmaking, right? Um, I remember oh. the Urberg Cobra, the HM3, yeah. and then I saw the Bouchon, uh, the, the Owl. I'm like, yeah. what the hell is this? You know, people, and I showed to my friends, like, Mark, you're crazy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> crazy <laughs> school, Stockholm syndrome, you know, yeah. like you said. <laughs> Um, so the next question we have, and it's the last one. It's a bit of a long one here, so just mm -hmm. bear with me. So we recently saw a big financial deal take place for Debitune, one of the industry's older indie brands, which now brings in Watchbox. How can indies manage their creativity and innovation with surviving, uh, while surviving financially without the need for a larger influx of cash from investors? MBNF seems to be a, a real example of this. We don't have like... A, you know, investment rounds or whatever. But no, no, we, 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 we seeded, you know? uh, I seeded with my own money. Uh, I've, mm -hmm. always, I've told the story umpteen times. Yeah. Um, it's been 16 years ago. We um, we have no uh, shareholders. I gave 20% of my company to our CTO, to my technical director, who joined mm -hmm. me 13 years ago. Yeah. And, uh, and that's it. And um, it is possible, I think. I mean, we're the f living proof that it is possible Definitely. to create 19 calibers in 16 yeah. years. And it auto it wasn't always easy, right? You had, had some really tough years. Breaking um, points. So 2007, almost. 2009, 2012, 2014. Luckily, all for different reasons, but that's a whole mm -hmm. other yes. story. I'll take another half an hour with sure, you another sure. time. <laughs> um, but I think, we, I think it's a much easier time for independence today mm -hmm. for one most important reason is they can go direct yes so today yeah. with the power of social media uh, they can actually access a, a super wide uh, population of people who are interested in them mm -hmm. and they can sell their pieces directly um, it's it makes for easier because today there are very few retailers who have the courage to take on uh, new brands mm -hmm. and i get it and I'm incredibly grateful to my, my retailers and I would not be here yeah. without them. And they still do a massive, I mean, they do 80% sure. of, of our, our business and it's going to stay that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you're starting uh, independent, don't try and open up retailers everywhere. Just yeah. try and get the customers to speak to you. and people like yourself mm -hmm. uh, and Esperlux and everybody who can actually make yeah. the, the, the aficionados discover and then they buy directly. That's what's going to save the the younger generation mm -hmm. creators. Yeah, but it's it's also a process, right? Like I, I so ten years ago, I saw I I, I I dreamt about independence. I discovered independence. I was far away from buying one, but end of this year or maybe beginning of next year, I can buy one. I mean, I have a few already, but I'm talking oh, about uh, the let's say 50, 60 k mark, which for me starts for with the Grail watch list, you know. That's the great watch list. But of course, yeah, Chaikin and other smaller brands make it fun for also for somebody who can afford, let's say, a lower, lower watch um, price wise. Now, coming back to that question, there is there are enormous costs. Mm -hmm. Now, let's not maybe yeah. trivialize it. Um, you've got three to four years of R&D yeah. prototyping. Um, it's as a business, it's a terrible business. Mm -hmm. And everybody who wants to invest in watchmaking brands should think at least twice, if not three times, yeah. because it's it's it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you're a very very big brand, that's a completely other mm -hmm. story. I mean, that's yeah. a very other story. You just have to go and see those who are publicly owned and see their numbers. Yeah. But if you're a small independent, your 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 cat is so capital intensive. There's so much which can go wrong. Yeah. Um, and, and this whole chain of things well, huh? uh, from co I mean, from collectors like. Some brands uh, did great watches, quality watches, but it just wasn't their time yet. And for many independents, they now shine because they survived, right? So it's a question of time also often. I must admit we're, we're lucky. And somebody just told me that this week, 
is that you're lucky that you've been around for 16 years. It mm. was a brand which was yeah. launching itself. It's like, yes, everybody talks about independence, but yeah. you're lucky that you've got that body of work with, which reassures a mm -hmm. client. Because, and I understand that, a client is going to put that sort of money. He wants to make sure that the brand is not going to go bankrupt yeah. in the next 18 months. And there have been course. a lot which have disappeared, yes, unfortunately. unfortunately yeah. um, so there is, there is a, there's a leap of faith, and we all have to thank the first customers. Mm. Like, imagine the guys who bought the HM1 14 years yeah, ago. When this I was am your first watch, totally, yeah. totally in debt to them. Yeah. I came from nowhere, created this crazy looking eight watch. Yeah. And the first year, 30 <laughs> people actually said, yes, take my money. Yeah. What? Wow. That, that's amazing. And so never, ever forget your first customers. Yes. Some brands have forgotten them. And I think that's very sad. But the people who allowed them to become who they are today mm -hmm. have now been yeah. because they're more celebrity customers who are taking yeah. over. Never forget the guys who had the courage to help you yeah. because without them, you're never there. Yeah. As a businessman myself, I can definitely agree. And I am in debt to my first client. There you go. And again, it's a, it's a very emotional thing when I mm -hmm. talk to them or you remember, like you, you, got, you got to step back. Like many independents have a lot of success right now as well. Um, and, I, and I also told them this. I'm like, guys, don't forget a few years ago, you almost didn't exist or you almost went away. This like, is going to like be a big said. challenge now. Um, yeah. we're, we're getting into a premium territory. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when you start getting into premium territory, you start attracting a whole different array of customers. Yes. But also resellers because they see the potential in independence. As a, right? as a financial investment and not mm -hmm. as watch lovers. Yes. So how do we make sure that the real watch lovers, the real MBNF lovers, mm -hmm get the pieces instead of the flippers. Yeah. Uh, yes. That is, yeah. it's a very new for us. So yeah, that is what we, yeah. <laughs> we sit down and every week talk about. <laughs> how do we make sure that the people who, who love us, who've supported us, uh, are, can get the pieces? Mm -hmm. And every, every small brand should actually think that way. Yeah. And have an interview with the collector and everything. <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much, Max, for taking the time for us, for S for Lux. If you have some questions, leave a comment down below. This video will be living on the Asplux YouTube channel forever. So basically, you can rewatch it. You can ask comments. Uh, so if I've we'll said anything answer. stupid, I'm sorry yes. because it goes on forever. Exactly. You can repeat it. You can clip it, make a separate <laughs> video about it, comment on it, react to it. Make memes out of it. <laughs> <laughs> make memes out of it. <laughs> but no, thank you so much. I wish you guys all the best. Thank you very and much. And if you guys have some questions, go on Asplux.com, see what they offer ask Chris directly. He always is, stays on top of these things and answers it competently and also with passion. And passion is what this is all about, right? Like we said, sometimes it doesn't make sense, but when you have crazy people like ourselves that support it, you always find a spot for you. So thank you so much. All Actually, the best. most of it doesn't make sense. Most of it doesn't make sense. That's what makes it enjoyable. <laughs> okay. Thank Thanks, you guys. I'll see you soon. Take care.